Okay, well, this is about the um, CPR training, basically, and then the importance of it and why I think people should be like certified in CPR um, out of their own like interests and what it does and all of that. Oh, I was like, well, a little about me. My name is Jacob Chavez. I'm 22 years old. I work in the Paso Fire Department. I've been on about like a year and a half. Um, I'm CPR certified, obviously, I need to be. And then I'm an EMT and a firefighter as well. My goal is to increase the number of certified CPR civilians. Um, huh? <laughs> you have a question? <laughs> Just kidding. Um, why do I want to? Because I think it's important. Um, you're surrounded by your loved ones all the time, your friends, family. You never know when something, someone's going to collapse, what steps to do first. Um, I think there was a UTEP instructor, no? That she had a, went to cardiac arrest. And then there was a civilian like next to her and started CPR, and she actually came back. Um, it increases your chance around 30% more. Um, and it takes around two to five minutes for responders to go on scene. So I think it's kind of important. Why that's why people should be certified. Um, say as a scenario, you guys are walking downstairs from class right now. You just bomb your test. You're all sad, thinking about like, oh, how am I going to do better? And then this young lady happens to collapse in front of you. And I don't wish that upon you, but if she did, what would you do? Freak out. You would freak out, yeah. yeah and then usually people would check pulse. Yeah. And then there's basic steps you could do, and I'm going to talk about it really fast um, that you could do. Um, first step is before CPR is actually activated, you should check pulse, see if they're breathing. If not, um, you should call 911. And then, um, for instance, you know where an AED is in this building? You know what an AED is? No. An AED is an automated um, defibrillator, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. There you, go. Um, you see my gyms all the time. So if you ever go to gym or a restaurant, sometimes they have them in a portable box. You just can go, uh, really, open the box, and a lot of people don't even know what it does or how to use it. But it's really, <laughs> it's really, it's really a good um, tool to use when someone's in cardiac arrest, and it really helps a lot. So one of the first steps was to be called 911, and they'll assist you on the phone. Um, you could ask someone to go find the AD, or if there is no AD, stay with the patient or the person. Um, 911 will help you out. They'll say begin CPR, chest compressions, and all that. So just stay on the phone, stay with the victim. Don't leave the victim alone or this young lady. You want to help her out. And the uh, first step in CPR is push hard, push fast. You're going to put your hands around the nipple line, and it's easier when you cross your fingers like that. Yeah. And then you're going to go. Usually it's around two inches. It might be a little uncomfortable. You're gonna hear like the chest kind of crack a little. Um, that means you're doing actually a good job. You're getting blood pumped to the vital organs. And it's, it's um, actually helping a lot. It helps you do around 100 compressions a minute. So you're gonna just count. Um, a lot of people when they sing, they sing that song, the ah, 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 saying a lot. So you don't have to sing it because I don't want you doing CPR. I'm like, ah, ah, you know, that's weird. You just hum it in your mind, and I've actually been, um, when I was doing CPR, I actually kind of just like, mm, mm, but like, you know, don't, don't do it out loud, please. But a lot of CPR classes will tell you that that song really does help with the rhythm. Um, you're going to deliver two rescue breasts with a person's head tilted slightly back. You'll see their chest rise. You'll know when they're getting um, proper ventilation, proper, uh, the airway's good. You deliver two rescue breaths, and then you continue compressions after around 30 compressions, so you do 30 compressions, two breaths, 30 compressions, until an AD, AD hopefully arrives, and then go ahead and attach that. Um, as for me, it depends what CPR class you guys take. You don't have to do rescue breaths, because you don't know what they have. They could have TB, um, they could have a disease, you don't know the person. If it's a loved one, I would, but um, different classes tell you different things. There's a tool, it's like a little mask you could use that does a really good seal. And people actually do carry them. Like, I have one in my backpack. And it's a really good tool. As far as the third step, um, continue CPR steps. Keep providing um, the cycles of chest compressions and rescue breaths uh, until the AED comes available. If not available, keep doing it until the EMS comes. Or someone medically trained will help you out. Um, you're, increasing, you're increasing their chances around, I want to say, 30%. And only 32% of people, um, other than medically, 
I guess like CPR certified, know what to do after like if someone collapsed. Um, thankfully, that one instructor, I think it was an instructor, or she was like a she worked here in UTEP, but she went to cardiac arrest, and someone was there and provided CPR immediately, which and she actually came back, so that was pretty cool. But um, the stats when a person goes into cardiac arrest survival depends early on CPR performance. Almost 90% of people who suffer out of hospital cardiac arrest die, which is not a good stat. So we could actually improve that. Um, tell your friends to get CPR certified. Um, CPR performed in the first few minutes of cardiac arrest can double or triple a person's chance of survival, which is awesome. 70% of out-of-hospital cardiac arrest happen in homes. Unfortunately, only about 32% who experience an out-of-hospital cardiac arrest get immediate help that they need before professionals arrive. So we could increase that, and that's why I'm telling you guys today. So you don't have to be CPR certified. You could tell your friends. Um, you never know when it's going to happen, so it could help you guys out. Um, I've been on scenes where they already initiated CPR, and it actually helps a lot. And you know they're getting blood pumped, and you could just kind of help them out. Then you get the breaths in, and it actually does like a lot. So you never know. I've been on one where the dad actually was helping us out on the scene, and then she actually came back, and it was his daughter. And he didn't know what to do. He told us, but he said he saw it in movies. <laughs> and that he was just like pushing away. Um, it's good to push, I, I forgot to say this earlier, on a hard surface. You don't want to be on a couch or a bed because you're not going to get proper death. Cool. You could become certified by taking courses on life ambulance. Um, they do it. Pro action, hospitals, I believe, sometimes have classes. They're around like four hours, six hours long. I believe it's like $30 to just get certified. No? You know what, Jen? $45. All right, and you guys have any questions? No? No? No questions? No? How long does it usually take? How long does what take? Well, it's, it's up to the paramedic or doctor. I mean, if you can bring them back, you can bring them back to get a pulse. But uh, I guess when you initiate CPR early, um, you're getting vital, you're getting the blood pumped to the vital organs. They could start pushing drugs in, maybe get a little pulse back, but there's not really a time limit. It's just if they, if they come back or not, they get that extra shock with the AED really helps. So knowing where your AED helps a lot. Um, but it's up to the paramedic doctor to either keep on performing it or go ahead and just cancel. That's a good question. Thank you. Any other questions? Because you have a big smirk on your face too. <laughs> <laughs> Huh? Are you How many compressions do you need to do before you're giving them breath? Some, I've been to classes where it says 30 to 2, and then I know the EP protocol just changed, and then I think we're doing, well, we're doing 100 compressions per minute, but we try to do the BVM, actually what we do is like 30 to 2, and I know with pediatrics and children, it changes, it varies, they can do 15 by 2, 15 compressions. So that's why taking the classes, these are just basic like little steps, but taking the classes helps with, it goes more specific. You do? No? Yeah? Good? And if you, and if you continue to compress and you feel that you're breaking um, some part of the chest, do you have to continue or do you just leave the person there to breathe? No, you can continue. I mean, that, that usually means you're doing a pretty good job. Um, it's going to feel kind of, if you're doing it right, you'll hear a crack and you're gonna see the chest kind of depress a little, but I mean, you gotta do what you gotta do. You're gonna feel that actually, you know, sometimes you actually feel the heart like pumping the blood and that means you're doing a good job. And as far as him coming back or her, your loved one and them hurting their bones and all. So yeah. the crack is like. It's, it's like actually, normal. yeah, it's normal. Like but it's the ribs. Oh, it's the ribs, okay. Yeah. It's like a crack in the ribs or something. Yeah. <laughs> That, it actually, and it looks nasty, it looks kind of gross, because it does, like, you're going to see this chest is like this, and, but you got to do what you got to do. It's a good question. Any other questions? I know you guys want to go get CPR certified right now, so I'll let you go. <laughs> no? All right, then. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Yeah.